recording onto your external portable hard disk drive. Yes? None other than yes. Folks, he has a Western Digital. I don't know if you've heard of Western Digital before, but they are it's a premium kind of brand. A big deal. It's kind of a big deal. <laughs> people but people much know better about than it. Eastern Digital. All right. Anyway, let's go. Timer Eastern is running. Analog, let's do a show, actually. shall we? Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Coming up on Roundabout, it's raining sheep. Hallelujah, it's raining sheep. A beautiful pre-war Mercedes-Benz is one hot car, and our panelists play another game of The Price is Correct. Who will make it to the Showcase Showdown? Don't touch that dial. Roundabout is sponsored by Advance Auto Parts. Visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, to get up to $30 off your next purchase, and buy everyone's favorite online store, Amazon.com. Opa, you guys from the Motor City. I am the Motor City Greek, Manny Katakis from GMAuthority.com. From stormy, husky, and brawling Chicago, figuratively, I'm Colin Bird from Cars.com. From the executive boardroom in the Roundabout Corporate Headquarters, I'm your host, Craig Cole. And I'm producer Colonel Bushrod Pepperdine Slanders. And this is Roundabout. Welcome to Roundabout Episode 131, our weekly chat covering car culture, vehicle reviews, and some of the auto news you may have missed. Oh yeah, we're back. This is the 131st installment of the show. 131, I've been here for one of them, listened to one of them. Tens of others, right? Yes. <laughs> he's, he's a regular fan, Ben. He's a fan of the show, if that makes of, you feel one better. One of our many fans. One of the many dozen fans. Dozen fan. <laughs> Fan. It's still not in the plurals yet. I don't. Because I don't think until you get above twenty. Mm -hmm. It should I don't be plural. Think, it should honestly, be. Yeah. let's. Is that, your, is that your guys' demographic though? Like when you when you do your analytics, uh, it's like if somebody listened to it once or twice, that's a dedicated follower. Exactly. Okay. Sure. Well, our analytics are pretty unscientific, Colin. We go by feel. We go by <laughs> gut. We don't trust the numbers. Yeah, like no. that, that's the Bob Lutzian method. Exactly. Yeah. Well, numbers uh, lie uh, and liars use statistics, right? Right. Could be, uh, you know, 90% of the time it's a recipe for disaster, but 10% mm. of the time it's the best success ever. Well, it's like Stephen Colbert says books, yeah. you know, too many facts, not enough heart. We've got heart. <laughs> We're that fifth Captain Planet character, right? The one nobody liked, <laughs> but the, the one the, that was always there. The forgetful little doing heart. His job. Yeah. <laughs> The it's power so of heart. It's like uh, deja vu that you mentioned that because I was – I think I'm that heart character. I don't know why I'm bringing this up, but <laughs> look, animals love me. You know that? Do they? Know. Captain You haven't seen me in person yet. Get, well, actually, no, that's not true. Maybe you see me in person. But. Gonna take pollution down, down to zero. zero. <laughs> Colin Bird. He's got he's a, he's a hero. He's got a bird name, too. An animal name. What if it – was it Captain Planet or Captain Plan IT? Like prepare your your computer systems. <laughs> oh, gird be. them up against <laughs> cyber attack. I hadn't even thought of that. Had not considered it. It's a cautionary tale, a fable, if you will. There was a TV show. They were trying to prep us for what was going to come. The North Koreans. You gotta keep an eye out. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Dangerous. Yeah. Well, I'm saying Kim, though, Kim, Kim Jong Un. Yes. Is it the great successor. <laughs> I wonder if Gumball Three Thousand is going to have dinner with that guy. <laughs> You oh, I'm saying, Ben, yeah, you bring your cat Watson here, you see who he really loves. That's all I'm saying. He's going to go home with Colin because he's a bird. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Colin. Anyway, we got Colin Bird on the line today in Chicago. Glad you could make it again. Thank you. You're Thanks damn near a, a regular regular. Yeah, regular-ish. <laughs> regular -ish. So, you know, Try to he, keep it regular. But. He gets the honorary-ish. Ish, yeah. Absolutely. And, of course, as we mentioned a few moments ago, we've got a roundabout first-timer joining us live in the corporate headquarters woo, right now. Woo, woo. You know what that noise means. No, I don't. Roundabout first-timer. Oh, is that what I'm it is? Roundabout, breaking my roundabout virginity. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> we'll leave that up to you. No. But Manoli. Son of a bitch. <laughs> Manoli, a.k.a. Manny. Manny. Kataticus. Kataticus. Cat, yeah. Katakis. Katana. Katana. Ism. Katanas. Anyway, very <laughs> Greek name. Opa, glad you could join us. Oh, thanks. Yes, yes. So um, you're with GM. Authority. Authority. Com. Yeah. Yes. So that makes you the man to go to for General Motors related news. Yeah, that's what I'd like to think. Okay. Well, very yeah. good. And you're also an Oakland University oh, yeah, alumni. Oakland. Two of them in the room right now. And that's outnumbering the one over there. You went to Central. <laughs> 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 oh, 
you believe it? Oh, so. Mm. But I thought we, there was just a cornfield up there. It was, <laughs> there's also a few bars. <laughs> if you're depressed, you can go there, right? Your show not doing well on CMU you get the, TV? You get the best girls on Dollar Beer Night. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Especially true? Especially when you spend 100 bucks. Whoa, <laughs> buying a uh, round for everybody? No. This is a uh, Detroit thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, we're shit. not here to make small talk about picking up prostitutes. We are here to cover the automotive news that you may, but probably haven't heard. So, Colin, I understand it's raining, right? Yes. Ta- do, we, do we need a poncho? Do we need a popper brawly? Tell us. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so is it oh god i can't believe when i write these things anyway let me get in my acting mode here is it raining cats and dogs where you are well that's better than the lamb chops and haggis situation <laughs> that's occurred in england's favorite penal colony australia <laughs> earlier this week according to autoblog a biblical meteorological event happened near the city of melbourne where sheep rain from the heavens, only to splatter their organs and wool all over one of the city's <laughs> busiest highways. The horrid event happened when a truck carrying 400 sheep hit a guardrail over an overpass, tearing a gash in the vehicle, which proceeded to flip over. The sprightly sheep <laughs> content inside the trailer proceeded to spiel, spill out on the Princess Highway below, hitting oncoming cars and miring Australia's precious infrastructure. A few hapless survivors were euthanized by the police on the spot. Less than 10 survived. Oh, my God. <laughs> Lamb That's... Chop from the hit TV show of my childhood is probably rolling over in its grave. And I don't actually know grave. if this show is still going on, but I think it is. I don't know. Non-gender specific grave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was a male or a female. I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Does it? <laughs> No humans were seriously injured, but traffic was backed up for nearly nine hours. And that's obviously the main important point is that us humans were so devastatedly affected by uh, this, this <laughs> event, not the sheep. Although sheep don't even belong in Australia, so let's, you know. They're a New Zealand specialty, I hear. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the cute thing about this, too, is um, in, that, in, in the real, they have uh, the um, confessionals from the Australians, and it's just, you know, with their accents. It's just hilarious. Can't really... There's, Take there's, it seriously. There's nothing cute about this. It's comic. really horrible. Well, yeah, like, you know, mate. You know, I'm I'm uh, I'm for real, mate. You know, I'm just telling you, it was like an action movie, mate. That's all I'm telling you. That's how it was, mate. <laughs> Colin, are, so are are they still livestock? I gotta ask. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's a good one. No, no, they're just mutton. Right mutton. Well, you know, it's funny in that video too. They show one wary like sheep in the middle of the highway, still alive. That they didn't reason, shoot with a gun yet. <laughs> Do they hobbling. have guns down there? They That's the thing with them. Is they're just, so, I don't know, right? actually. Uh, I think you can. You can have guns. Huh. Yeah. Huh. I don't know if you know this about Let's me, Craig, but yes. I, actually, I lived in uh, Australia for two years. Did I ever tell you that? No. I was a kid. Back in college? Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, back, in, back as a child. Oh. A wee bird. Just I lived in uh, Sydney for a bird. year and then Melbourne for another year. Isn't it he Melbourne? Was, he was but a chick. Yeah, yeah this story hits home for me. I yeah, can tell you're very emotional. I'm very emotional, yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just hurt, you know. Isn't the, it pronounced Melbourne? That, huh? Melbourne? Melbourne. Melbourne. Not Melbourne. <laughs> I lied. I was actually in Perth, so. Oh. It's on the opposite side of the country. Far, it is. Far west. It's as far a western civilization city has ever been. <laughs> it's as what? far as they've gone. Are the descendants of Britain's criminals friendly? Very friendly. Okay. They're nice people. Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Now you know. <laughs> Moving along, this next article has it all. Nazis, World War II, and a beautiful Mercedes-Benz. Here's what I'm talking about. Back at the close of the Second World War, a car was taken by U.S. soldiers from a prominent German industrialist. No, it wasn't Mirko Reinhardt or his father, Eugen. Hans Prim, known as the Zipper King, was the guy's name, because his company actually manufactured all kinds of buttons, fasteners, and snaps. And curiously, the firm is still in his family's hands. Anyway, the vehicle in question is a 1935 Mercedes-Benz 500K Special Roadster. When new, it was one of the most expensive vehicles available on the market. I find it amazing the car actually survived the war, given the fact that Germany was basically reduced to powder following endless waves of Allied bombing. Anyway... Fast forward to last year, and a Dutch classic car collector purchased this gorgeous convertible for a hearty $3.8 million at an RM Auctions event in Monterey, California. 
Then, in March of this year, he tried to sell the car at a show in Essen, Germany, at which time it was impounded under court order. Turns out, the grandchildren of Prim have apparently have a valid claim to the classic Mercedes, since the Americans that initially took it had no right to it. Sucks to be that Dutch dude. And so all the people that had their R32 GTRs impounded can shut up, because yep. this is a bigger deal than that. Oh, yeah, almost four million <laughs> buckaroos. What's that in euros? I bet it's a lot. <laughs> but, well, yeah, for a few more weeks. Yeah. <laughs> tell Greece, <laughs> tell, tell damn worthless. Greeks, <laughs> causing all these yeah, to those, The Greeks and, well, I was going to say Spaniards, because we don't want to talk about these Greeks. But yes. <laughs> yeah, by the way, oh. we didn't get a chance to thank you for that. Oh, oh there's some racist talk the about subject. Spaniards going on there? <laughs> For okay. the rest of the world from Greece bankruptcy, you're welcome. <laughs> now, Craig, I know you're you're into international law and such. Um, Boring things, yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> how can they? How can these people have a right to something to happen in a war where laws were thrown to the wayside? That's a good how? question. I'm not certain. <laughs> I don't follow the laws. I don't go to the German, whatever it is. You don't court. go to the courts. Is that what you're telling Gericht me? Or some Gerichte, whatever it is. Marco, Marco where's would know. Him, yeah, where's, where's he when, he when we need him? He's not holding up his end of the chat room bargain here. He's slacking again. Marco, we need German words now. Yes. No! <laughs> Marco Krokop. Yeah. Anyway, car is gorgeous. We found the article on Bloomberg. Check out the pictures. This, it almost looks like a cord uh, with the way the exhaust comes out of the, the hood louver side. But beautiful vehicle. It reminds and me of an old piano. And I don't how know so? Why. I it does, you know, curvature. it kind of does, the way the little... Yes. Yeah. So it reminds me of the uh, Coella DeVille car from the cartoon. <laughs> Is she causing genocide in that car? Maybe that <laughs> I think she genocide. did cause some genocide. Didn't she kill the Dalmatians? Pretty much. You know, that was her goal. Burn yeah. them down that, in that Was fire? that the true story in the non-Disney version? Is that what happened? <laughs> Does it really yeah, happened? Mean, she won, obviously. Anyway. Although, if I'm about... not mistaken, it sounded like you said Koala DeVille. Was she after koalas? <laughs> the koala marsupials? Marsupial. <laughs> Pouch bearing mammals. Anyway, we got another article dealing with expensive automobiles, plural, Very. more than one. Yes. I believe in Monaco. Yes, but it still doesn't amount to that one. No? No. Okay, well, what happened? Well, <clears throat> we, we all know that uh, we love hearing about stories of misfortune with those more fortunate than us. Of That's course. why programming such as TMC exists. So when a story appears with a pretty young blonde female wrecking her $390,000 Bentley Azure convertible, it amuses us. As a bonus, she took other members of the infamous 1% down with her oh, burn. by crashing into other exotics, including a $225,000 Ferrari F430, a $235,000 Aston Martin Rapide, and a $125,000 Porsche 911, and a lesser, but not so much lesser, Mercedes-Benz S-Class. Poor person's car. As poetic punishment, the pileup happened in such a way that the she-perp was trapped in the her ride with the top down, allowing onlookers to stare and point and laugh at her, at, along with the innocent passengers. Total damages of this monopolous mishap by our Monacan lady are estimated to be as much as $1.1 million. No matter, her dad will pick up the tab. Oh, yeah. You know that's what's going to happen. Sheep-herp. Uh, Sheep-herp. <laughs> <laughs> I thought well, we were back to talking about sheep going over bridges for a second. No, no. Sorry. No. Who's the poor guy with the S-Class? It's like, he needs a handout, Yeah, right? it's like, why couldn't he afford the AMG? This is Monaco. Go big Don't or Don't you home. have to be a millionaire to live there? Or a gazillionaire. Some so. sort of oligarch. Bajillionaire. I yeah. can't comprehend those things. I sucked at math. That's, that's why, why you went into journalism, That's why right? I'm here, Come yeah. on. Yeah. So... There you go. What's next? Oh, I'm next. He's made bears America's number one enemy and truthiness a household word. What is Stephen Colbert up to now? Well, the TV funny man has a knack for generating all kinds of publicity for himself, and you guessed it, he's at it again. According to Jalopnik, the cable star wants to win the Westminster Dog Show, somehow, and he wants to become Motor Trend's Car of the Year because he is that much of a badass. It will be interesting to see what his 0 to 60 time is, not to mention how well he handles the slalom. So, <laughs> Mr. Colbert, how are you going to do that? I wonder what his breaking time is. Yes. Do you ever think mm -hmm. that, do you know if maybe this is actually like a media buy that we're unaware of, or do you think he just chooses that stuff at random? I, I don't know. It's random. Uh, that's some I've pretty good publicity. Yeah, I've often yeah. wondered that because a lot of times you've, 
he'll do these like um like when he's running for president yeah, yeah like schlocky like doritos yeah, doritos. yeah doritos. you know it's the doritos presidential run 2012 <laughs> or you know whatever yeah. and i always wonder did they pay well they for clearly that? paid yeah doritos yeah, definitely sponsored him so cool ranch sucks one wonders <laughs> How what, dare what's you? The, what's the what's the new stuff called? The the with the super burst of flavor, the super crunchy, I've, spicy nachos or something. High, it's like high high volume. I don't wreck your insides. High, high, yeah, it's, high fructose. <laughs> we're basically, it's to the point where you're ingesting so much orange powder that it you're. It's called flavor, Manny. Yes, orange powder well, is MSG one of the food is flavor. I, oh, I only like MSG when it comes in Asian. <laughs> when it comes in Asia, yeah. Asian dishes. <laughs> you know, I'm a little, I'm a little miffed at Mr. Colbert, because I've been a Colbert fan for a decade or more, long before he suddenly shot to fame. You ever heard of this little program called Strangers with Candy? I know no. I have. Yes, it's awesome, <laughs> hilarious, Ben. Hilarious, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> Tell and me all about suddenly, it. Vito. Everybody is a Colbert fan, and it's like, what the hell? I've liked his brand he, of humor since the beginning, and now everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. Uh, he's, You're freaking out. He's the New England Patriots of comedy television. This is bullshit. I bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. Whoa, whoa. Calm down. Sorry. I just get emotional sometimes. <laughs> I stole the TV. <laughs> <laughs> Did some more time. And now I'm back in school. Speaking of pig, <laughs> Jerry Blank. <laughs> <laughs> Colin, what's going on on some road? We got Babe wandering around, some, apparently. Yeah, some road. In, le- in less gruesome livestock More slash livestock dead stock stories. news, as I feel like I have to say now because of Craig. Um, <laughs> a baby pig wearing a cute scarf safely traversed eight lanes of traffic on I-37-6 near Pittsburgh, according to, to Jalopnik. Several motorists called in the pig siding, which luckily for the pig happened in gridlock traffic at around 8.30 a.m. In another stroke of luck, the pig escaped any attempts of capture and was last seen running into the woods. While I'm not entirely sure about this, I'll go on a limb and say that this domesticated cute pig leg is likely dead regardless. (laughs) (laughs) It was probably A, eaten by a cat, dog, opossum, raccoon. Opossum? (laughs) (laughs) B, it starved to death. (laughs) <laughs> or see, it tried to save highway crossing at 11 p.m. that night. Uh, I th- I think what I'm trying to point out here is is that this very cutesy story is that life is meaningless. You can run around. <laughs> you can run around with cute clothes. Life is meaningless great. unless you can turn into bacon. Then you have a second life. <laughs> yeah, and you're crispy and <laughs> fatty yeah. and salty and delicious. That. Yeah, but uh, yeah, acting cute, uh, wearing cute clothes and acting strange um, won't stop you from being a dead one day. From being a dead, <laughs> Kyle, and this story was full of all kinds of strange things. It, he escaped, then he got eaten by an opossum. <laughs> but either way, he's gonna be a dead someday. Yep. Next story. <laughs> Next like, change, story. The subject. change the subject. All right, many. All right, we're also Humvee. Gonna... Hum- yeah, yeah, Humvee for value. This. This story comes from uh, our friends at Hooniverse, and there are very few fe- uh, very few vehicles to ever be conceived that are more hairy-chested than the Humvee, slightly domesticated and sold to the public as the Hummer H1, and commanding a six-figure price tag, the diesel-powered super SUV can only be owned by those of the highest money-to-attention issue ratios. So when a fully raw, high-mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicle, a.k.a. HMMWV, Found um, itself on eBay, currently going for a scant twenty five hundred bucks. It would allow virtually anyone to own a militaristic, a militaristic mobile machine. Alliteration. Alliteration at its finest. But that's not to say that this Humvee is a junkyard find. In fact, it starred in the set of the Avengers, the mm-hmm. latest superhero movie, grossing more cash than this humble writer can fathom, let alone count. Sorry, guys. However, by the time you hear this, the bidding price could well be into the 15000s or at the same price of a Chevy V Sonic. So, which one would you rather have? An emasculating Mini or a Mini Tank? Hmm, well, I couldn't afford to fuel the tank, so... Well, it's diesel. You can, well, you can run, and it's old school. You know, it's before the dump, so you can actually make it run on uh, vegetable oil if you wanted yeah. to. Yeah. You can just go to McDonald's. Yeah, yeah, or that, too. Back up to the, the no-diving sign on the deep fryer tank and just <laughs> suck it out. Or yeah, the well, they throw Tricks. it away anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Dump it in the Great Lakes, probably. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, unfortunately, that's why Metro Beach is always closed. <laughs> Clumps of fryer. So, well, yeah. Oh, there's some some reason there's a bunch of salmonella. We have yeah. to close a beach down. Why is there salmonella? Oh, because there's raw chicken grease just everywhere. Oh, delicious. Mm. Don't, don't have don't that. Don't forget thing. about the spinach. Oh, the spinach right. show. Spinach, spinach is delicious. Spinach is good. Causes kidney stones, apparently. Actually, Sawyer. Um, my dad has that problem. Oh, God. Yeah. With, because of the spinach? It's yeah, so much no, calcium, it's, man. It's, it's, it's the calcium, calcium in it, yeah. yeah. Strong bones. We, we well, too and, much and, calcium, and, and, too much potassium. It's, and Greg, mag- stop. it's magnesium, too. Just stop. No more calcium. <laughs> See, if you eat those Doritos, you're fine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're having that intervention See, right now, buddy. If you just ate the MSG, you ate okay. it. Eight, if you, you just you could it. escape from kidney stones. You'd never you get a dead. A no, you <laughs> never. No. He's a dead now. Exactly. Why would you want to eat food that dies? You see a McDonald's play to McDonald's for a year from now, and you realize mm-hmm. it's immortal. You mm-hmm. want that in you. It's one of the gods on yes. Mount Olympus. Yes. Yeah. Were you trying to do a like a Mario Brothers accent, Colin? He's a going to be a dead. <laughs> <laughs> He's a dead now. He's no. a dead now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that is – we'll stop teasing you now, Colin. I'm sorry. That concludes the news portion of the show. But we've got a whole lot of great more roundabout coming up <laughs> next. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get to – we're going to go in the garage, find out what everybody's been driving of late. Mm-hmm. Going to do news for shut-ins and, of course, a very special edition of The Price is Correct. So you're going to want to stick around for that. A whole lot more with Manny Katakis and, of course, Colin Bird. But right now – I gotta tell you about an exciting new reverse mortgage program, Ben. Oh, tell me! And you gotta tell me. <laughs> we did a revival last week. Oh, there that's was right. nothing in the collection plate. We're done. Oh, <laughs> reverse mortgage. <laughs> it just sounds bad. Why couldn't it have a better name? But Robert Wagner is sponsoring it, right? Come on, he's, he's number two. He's America's most trustworthy individual. Didn't he murder his wife or something on a boat? Oh, something just, like that. It just sounds like a double negative. I don't understand how <laughs> how you sell that. <laughs> it makes a positive. It's algebra, what? right? How can a mortgage go in reverse? When know? it's from Valley Forge Financial, Colin, you don't have to worry. They're tr- they're the community's leading. For the financing. I guess local you're bank. right. Where's my pills, Craig? <laughs> <laughs> All I got is Pepto Bismol. <laughs> Pepto Bismol. Abysmal. Anyway, we got to tell y'all about Amazon.com. It's more than just the largest river in the world. Oh, it is. It's also a great <laughs> online service. And They're if you go, I don't know. Amazon sounds like it's bigger. Just, just <laughs> you can go check the facts. If you <laughs> anyway. Amazon.com. If you go to our website first, roundaboutshow.com, you'll see a banner ad at the top of the page for Amazon. We're asking you, because the next time you go to purchase something from Amazon, we're asking you to first visit our website, roundaboutshow.com. We're asking that you click on that banner ad at the top of the page. It takes you to Amazon, and then you do all your shopping as you normally would. And we get a little bit of credit for the stuff you buy. It's a win-win. It doesn't cost you a penny extra. Can you believe that, Ben? Hardly. I know. I know. So, again, if you go to our website before you buy something from Amazon. And How does got, this work again? They got tens of millions of products on there, Ben. They're up to – it's a lot. So Let's pretty just much say it's just books is what you're trying to tell No, me. they've got Styli. Really? Styli. <laughs> you kind. ought to feature that as a product. Oh, you know, like maybe a did. pack of 22 or so. Well, you, value, Ben. V for value. <laughs> v for Humvee value. <laughs> so Amazon.com, you, you already know, as a listener of Roundabout, you know – the breadth of the products Amazon offers. We're asking you to first visit our website, roundaboutshow.com, before you go to purchase something from Amazon. We're asking you to click on that Amazon banner ad at the top of our page. It takes you right to the Amazon storefront where you do your shopping as usual. And the only thing that's different is that we get a little bit of credit for the products you buy. You're going to do that when you go and buy something now, aren't you? To quote Billy Madison, just do it! (laughs) Who's Billy Madison? Oh, yes, that guy. Uh, You hate movies too, huh? Movie extremist. (laughs) <laughs> no, uh, what's it? It's, it's, it's Adam Sandler. There yeah, you go. See, I know. See, I know things. It took me, the hard drive was spinning. It's only 5,400 RPM. <laughs> <laughs> seeking. Oh, seeking. We were so warmed up. Yeah. So um, every week we like to highlight one of the products that is available via Amazon. Like I mentioned, there are millions. And this week we've got a neat little ditty called Race Ramps. Ooh, what's that? These are ramps that'll facilitate loading a vehicle onto a trailer, for instance. And they're actually made out of foam, and you drive on them. Think about hmm. that for a minute. So are they lightweight? 
They're very lightweight. I'd say they're, yeah, incredibly Foam is lightweight. largely I'd air. I'd say they'd float, and you could, they could be rafts. You could, <laughs> you could go down the Amazon. Yes, you, know. you could go down the Amazon <laughs> in those. Absolutely. Just need a, a little plank. They're like hum, Humvee water wings. Cam- catamarans. <laughs> <laughs> Make a Humvee catamaran. Just so. put a prop in the back. You're good to go. You're 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 so good to go. You're you're gone already. You're go- just re- you replace the the fifty cal in the back with a little Johnson motor. <laughs> outboard trolling <laughs> motor. Outboard. But so now, now, Craig, this is a horrible example. Why? And I'm gonna tell you why. These things are so big. This is gonna cost me a fortune to ship. How am I ever gonna afford it? If, can I explain what it is first? Good question, though. Let me tell the listeners what race ramps are. I thought you already did. They're, They're ramps, ramps made out of foam. And each one what supports to up know? to 1,500 mother beep pounds <laughs> of weight <laughs> each. That's three grand in, in uh-huh. weightage. I'm not sure what that is in metric. It's probably a lot, Mer- Merco, so just you'll have to do the conversion. But they're lightweight. They're very strong. They're very durable. They come apart. You can get a variety of different – you can get wheel chocks. You can get different sized ramps for loading vehicles into trailers. Brilliant idea because a lot of cars, performance cars, something that you're going to trailer, let's say do the track, yes. to race on the weekend, they're very low to the ground. So getting them up onto the trailer can takes, be a difficult. Yes, it takes some effort. But these are very lightweight, very convenient, and they can be yours for 228 bucks with free Super That's Saver shipping. That's the price you pay for lightweight ramps. Lightweight, exactly. That can double so ben, But more times. to my point. Yes. What was you asking? Why would I ever buy this online? Because it would be so expensive to ship. Not if you're a Prime member. No? Tell us about the advantages of Valley Forge Financial Prime membership. Well, if you don't know, <laughs> and clearly I do, Amazon Prime is this nifty little service they have where you can pay, I think it's like 70 bucks a year, and for that entire year you get free two-day shipping. And this happens to be eligible for Prime, which means it don't matter. This thing's huge, gigantic, can hold 1,500 pounds, whatever. It's free shipping. Pretty much free. Yep. So we're well, asking Not pretty you, much. I'm sorry. It is. It's, it's, it is free. Certified. Certified You free. go to the notary. They stamp it. It's embossed. And we're not, it's free. We are not talking free as in comes to your house in two months. We're talking free as in two days. It's pretty mm. awesome. No. So, so there you go. There you go. Again, visit roundaboutshow.com. Follow the Amazon banner ad before you buy anything. We get a little bit of credit for us. You're helping out your favorite automotive podcast. We thank you Represent. for your support. So next up, Ben, I do believe we are taking a peek in the garage. Oh, big block Ford <laughs> from the old 70-something Lincoln Mr. Bowman had, right? Sure. With the cracked water nader and leaking mufflometer. And opera windows. <laughs> yes, of course. It had opera windows. Manual or automated? They were hydraulic powered opera windows. Oh. Anyway, yeah. this is a segment where we talk about the cars we've been driving recently. Got a, a little bit of a, a diverse spread here. Manny, why don't you start us off? You're in a, in a particular GM vehicle, one that's pretty endangered. Very it endangered. Uh, it's been confirmed to be. Uh, uh, euthanized, put out the pasture, mm. whatever nice way you want to put it. It is the a 20- dead. A, it's <laughs> it's, it's, it's gonna going to be a to dead. Be a dead. <laughs> uh, it's no. the uh, 2013 Chevrolet Avalanche, 5.3 liter V8, hulking monster, and it will perform a pretty good tail slide that I found out earlier this afternoon, uh, just out of leaving the Belle Isle Grand Prix. Mm. Yes, um, interior is this. How, how, how did you say it? Or Saudi Arabian maple? Yes. It's yes. wood trim. Yes, the wood trim is they Saudi. They pump it up from yes. the forests that grow the, under yes. the desert, and then they make the wood trim and out of it. And they make the wood trim out of that. And then the leather is uh, just this gray, and it's... Grimson gray is the color. <laughs> Gri- it's Grimson gray, and the, uh, the exterior is like this this teal. Basically, the whole thing, it just... it The, the coloring package just isn't perfect, but uh, the thing... The mid-gate, for anyone that's out unfamiliar with it, you can actually open... The back of, the, like in the the midsection of the truck, and fold the fold the seats down. And you can actually get like an extra three feet or so of of, mm. of uh, trunk space, and it's pretty convenient because it's it's not a huge you know you're you're not driving a a, a crew cab pickup truck with an eight foot bed. You're driving what is essentially the size of a Chevy Suburban, mm-hmm. which is a little smaller, yeah. which it's still hulking, but. Still hulking, but a smaller hulking. It's a smaller hulking. Lesser hulking. So you like how it drives, like how it handles? Yes. How uh, you know, you know with it's inherent with all the GMT models. You get that, that numb steering feel, but other than that, it's yeah. 
Yeah, plenty of power. Sucks the gas, but you got E85, so you can oh. pay cheap for it. Is it is E85 cheaper now? Yes, it, it usually is. Okay. Not, I mean, not it's still over three bucks, but it's better than three seventy. Mm. Very good. Uh, I've been in a couple vehicles of late. First one was the Infiniti G37S. Yeah, it probably drives a little better than Avalanche. Oh my! I didn't want to give the car back. Right. It was so nice, just solid. The ride was firm, but it didn't. It, the harshness wasn't there. You know, you'd hit bumps or something, mm -hmm. frost heaves, or a couple big ones on my commute, and it just it just doesn't feel it really. You hit them and just kind of floats right over it. Uh, but it handles amazingly it's well. It's proper suspension. And they did their homework. 3.7 liter V6, 328 horses powers. See, now you took me a, for a ride in it, and the one thing I, one complaint I had was yes. the, the engine yes. sound. I mean, it was very. <laughs> kinda, I don't know. No, it sounds okay. Kind of burbly. It's, a, it's not a V8. <laughs> so, 328 horsepower mm -hmm. out of. Uh, 3.7 yeah. V6. It's pretty good. They've got this system on there, and it's not. It's been out for a few years. It's called VVEL, variable valve, event and lift or something. I forget the the proper name. Because it, it couldn't say VVT. Yeah, basically. <laughs> but it, it's very ingenious because it's c it controls the lift of the intake valves it's to control ingenious. the 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 f f flow into the engine. Then, <laughs> so very clever engineering. It reduces the pumping losses. If you've got like a throttle plate, you've got to suck the air past. It's less efficient for the engine, so mm. this helps eliminate those. Clever. Very clever, very fast car, six-speed manual. Ooh, oh yeah, a man's car. Rear wheel drive. Well, not necessarily a man's car, but a n nice, the hardcore yeah. version. It was beautiful. Then it was nice also save. say again, Colin. <laughs> nice <laughs> save. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As AM2 says, basically a 370Z sedan. Yeah, pretty much. Awesome, awesome car, awesome engine, awesome transmission. You could probably see better out of it too than a 370Z. Oh yeah. <laughs> more comfortable too I and I, I i haven't driven the new three series but this is awesome i don't see how mm. your car could be better than this it's just amazing the competition is real hot in that section oh yeah a little segment there yeah also hyundai azera i've been in which is not so nice <laughs> unfortunately it's, it's not what was uh it's not really what were you saying colin I said it's a car. It certainly it's, is a car. It's well, Toyota's uh, slogan for the Prius C. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's certainly a car. Do, do. But uh, Azera, I want, it looks pretty nice. The fit and finish is fantastic. But driving it, it's weird because the ride is kind of stiff and jiggly, but the handling sucks. It rolls around. So it's the worst of all worlds, really. Oh. <laughs> the steering is so it's, numb. It's, it's and not even a couch on wheels. Like, no. You know. It, it, people always rag down the Mercury Grand Marquis, but mm -hmm. honestly, it did not deserve it. You, really? ever, you drive that thing to North Carolina, and you're just like, oh. it's so you can you lounge just back like this. Yeah, the bench seat. Yeah, the bench seat. Like, and and you you feel absolutely nothing on the you nothing on the road. Yeah, and it's it, it's Run fantastic. Run for five hundred yeah, thousand, thousand miles. miles. Yeah, you can have black smoke coming out the backside, and it can do that for another hundred thousand <laughs> miles before it decides to really kick it. Yeah. It decides to be a dead. Sorry. It decides to be a dead. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sh title of the episode, I, I'm afraid. But yeah, Azera, uh, not that impressed. It's a little bit noisy on the highway. It's quiet, but it's a little bit noisier than I thought it would be. And I could never really get comfortable behind the wheel. I don't know what it was. I just mm. never felt connected. So Never felt in control? Mm, no. Just weird. It's a weird feeling car. Colin, have you driven the Azera? Yes. I um, And I don't know. It just felt like... It this is not a really. I, I, there's not much I can say about it. I mean, it's just that sort of car where. I mean, it, yeah, I don't. I don't really know what to say. It's just a big <laughs> car. Yeah, it's just like a big car, pretty Here. much. Yeah. yeah. Well, and Hyundai's then, I think doing like the checkbox. We've got all the features we need, but then like somehow the mm. sum of the parts doesn't equal what it it's, should. It's it, yeah. They they went for the paper game. Yeah. yeah. Paper tiger. Yeah. That one's a bit confusing because it's so close to the Genesis and the Equus that I don't really understand the Man. point, and it's not priced very competitively it's, either. I, I think it's that more soft core front wheel drive kind of well, kind of setup. I think the Sonata is more appealing, or the Genesis is more appealing if you want to spend a little more. So why is yeah. the Azera there anyway? That's my opinion. Because the Avalon is there. I guess so. But the Genesis is better. Yeah. I, I'm. I can't disagree with you. I'm. Yeah. Just can't get in that. I can't get in the mindset. Yeah. So, uh, Colin, you've also been in vehicle. Pardon me, many vehicles. 
Yeah, Why it, was the, uh, it was the uh, Midwest Automotive Media Association, um, which I think we're all a part of. Well, yeah. Or Man- Manny. I, I still need to join of. the club. Yeah, I've, um, I've been told this many a time. Uh, this is um, we have. There's a spring and a fall rally, and the spring rally is at Road America, and at Road America, it's more. It's a larger event, and they bring about a hundred cars, and there's seventy to eighty um, journalists from the Midwest region, and and it's a two-day event. Um, uh, some people are there for three days, but you know, we we get a ride um, on the track with cars that have track labels. There's off-roading with certain vehicles. Ironically, the Avalanche is one of them. <laughs> um, uh, there's auto crossing. There's um, go karting. It's just a fun event. Aww. And uh, one one interesting thing we got to do this year is um, uh, they had a they say S they say SCAA Manny, but uh, SCAA or SCCA. Um, race car driver from the Cadillac team, uh, Andy Pil- Pilgrim, and he did uh, hot laps in one of the uh, CTSV coupe race cars that they have. So it's like, you know, it looks like a CTSV, except uh, you've probably seen it on Cadillac.com. Yeah, well, they, I, I, I saw it this afternoon. Oh, right, yeah. No, I, I meant they in the uh, the Royal Day. <laughs> Sorry. They in the, uh, yeah. Anyway, but, uh, you know, it's the same engine, but with considerable weight reduced, uh, mm-hmm. and they put a passenger side seat and it was really hilarious because like uh, um i don't know if craig and ben have seen it on my facebook but they make you get in this race car suit you know you put in this body suit and you put on the helmet and then like for me i was like the second largest guy who tried i'm not even that large of a guy i'm like six foot 230 and i could barely fit into it so they you know i I had to climb in and then three guys had to push me in as hard as they could to get this uh five point harness around me (laughs) <laughs> it was just a lot of funny. Andy was just like he's Australian, I think, and he's just like, "Oh, so uh, what? What? Uh, what cars have you driven on the track today?" And I was like, "Oh, you know, I, you know, I did the uh, the show with the new track package and the SRT8 um, Charger and the the uh, LSG, um, I mean 350 with the F Sports package." He's like, "Ah, ah, cool, cool. Have you actually driven any real sporty cars on the track?" I was like, uh, "No." He's like, oh, well, so, you know, it takes you out there. It was, just, it was just like the most insane thing in the world, you know. It's just because he could hit all the rumble strips we're not supposed to in the uh, production cars. Because he knows what he's doing. Exactly, and, and hitting the rumble strips in a production car can devastate the transmit, uh, the suspension. Um, and, yeah, it was intense. I have yeah. no idea how fast he was going. It could have been, for all I know, Mach going one. slower than... <laughs> I think well, it was going like... Thing. You'll go out on the track and you'll drive it, for instance, at an event, and you'll think, oh, I, I went pretty quick. Yeah. Hell no. No. Take the <laughs> fastest freaking lap you've done in your life, and you compare that to something when the pro driver takes you around, it's crazy yeah, what yeah. they can do. It's freaking <laughs> insane. Yeah, it's hot laps. So they were doing hot laps in the uh, GTR2. Mm. Um, Nissan had somebody, but I didn't get an opportunity to, to do that. Stuff. What was the star of the show of the cars you drove, Colin? Or, or even a top Mama. three. Yeah, top three. Uh, you know, I, I feel like I'm obligated to say that, like, the Aston Martin DBS, uh, I think it was a DBS9. Is that what, how you say it? Or, no, that's a DBS. Okay. Um, but no, I actually didn't. I wasn't, I wasn't really into that vehicle at all. Uh, you know, it was a Cadillac um, CTSV Coupe. Uh, doing autocrossing with that was pretty oh, awesome. Yeah. They had the uh, SL 550 AMG, the new one, and that was Amazing, except for the fact that the auto uh, stop start is pretty atrociously um, intrusive. And then um, another vehicle that ironically has that too, the um, BMW 328i, which yeah. is an incredible. It's like that's a funny thing when you have all those cars lined up and you start driving them all. You're like, yeah, you know, like back you were saying about the Infinity. Back. Like, uh, I'm like, BMW just makes the best cars, you know, and I, I don't even. I'm not a BMW fan that much, but I mean it's just true. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> do it back to back. District but, of Columbia Auto Geek in the chat room is asking, were there any Jaguars? Yeah, they had the XJ. Um, Wait, um, the, the Jag- elongated X- XJ. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that one was all right. You know, I mean, I've driven that last year. I actually like that one a lot. I just don't like the uh, digital readout that that and the Land Rovers have these days because they're really laggy. But it's a you know. It's pretty affordable compared to the S class or uh, the Seven Series. So, okay. um, but yeah, the three twenty eight I. You know, if I was personally going to buy a car and could afford it, uh, since that is uh, in the low, I mean, I, would, I probably would never buy something that expensive. But it's not, It's it's one of those ones where it's almost attainable. You know, because it's what thirty five thousand dollars, and it's just great handling. It's balanced. Yeah. Uh, the new Turbo Four is is better than the uh, three liter that they had last year. Bullshit. So. 
<laughs> but the auto stop start is just insane, insanely intrusive. But luckily, unlike in the uh, SL, at least I couldn't find it in the SL. You can turn it off in the BMW, but you have to do it every time that you get in the vehicle. Do you guys We're going to make you save fuel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Did you guys ever notice how closely priced the 1 Series and the 3 Series are? Mm. It's like, what's, yeah. the, what's the point? Yeah. I guess it, I guess if you go below thirty thousand dollars, it's not considered luxurious anymore. Yeah, I guess the X One might is it is it cheaper than the One Series? The X the X One? Yeah, because the X One just got priced. I couldn't remember, but I thought it was ironically priced like actually like in an affordable manner compared to the X Three. Yeah, it's it's definitely cheaper than the X Three. I and the Three Series, I think. We've got another question in the chat, Colin. What's the horsepower of that new four? Is it about two forty? Yeah, I think it's 240. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Plenty of power. The, yeah, and I think the 3 liter actually had less. Um, the 3 liter in uh, Yeah. Uh, like 230. Six less yeah, 30, 31, 450. So, yeah, it, it is cheaper than uh, than the 1 series. But that's the problem. Yeah. Everybody's running down to four cylinder engines. You're losing the, the feel, the the um, the responsiveness. Not that the 2 liter 4 isn't, isn't going to do well when you tip in on the throttle, but I mean, just. The sound the engine makes. Yeah. The four cylinder is never going to sound like a six. They're it's never going to sound no, like a V8. Yeah. Come on. No, there, 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 there's a loss of, <clears throat> of overall just niceness, mm -hmm. refinement. You can tell, no matter how yeah. good of a job they do. Yeah, it's it's going to happen. So. Even, that, even that, that was the uh, first year I was brave enough to go on actual on the track by myself. And uh, my uh, coworker Kelsey Mays is just like, you know, break, break, turn. He's just like screaming at me the whole time. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. I, th I feel like the thing with those – if you have the opportunity to ever go on a track, it's like the first couple of times, you know, you, you get all nervous, but you're not going to go wrong on the first couple of times. It's like, you know, you do it three or four times, and I think that's when you start taking those risks where you, you end up hitting the rumble strip and going into the sand or something. <laughs> DC Auto Geek says, V6s are like an okay-looking girl. They are small and fun to toss around like a four, and, then they, and they aren't as big and strong like an eight. <laughs> oh, yeah, Mud. Yeah, Mud, mud Monster was there. I, I met uh, William Ailey in real life. I'm guy. so sorry. <laughs> I mean, yes, he's a great guy. <laughs> he watched me, um, you know, at, at night we all get drunk on Mercedes um, dime, obviously after we're not driving vehicles mm -hmm. anymore. Disclaimer. And um, I think he, he saw me dancing, so. <laughs> so uh -oh. there's a, Must you know, have been anyone, a lot of drunk a, going on. <laughs> there's a $5,000 bounty on uh, Mud Monster's head, so. <laughs> 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 All right, moving along, guys. That will conclude In the Garage, but we've got to move on to our next segment. And uh, here at Roundabout, we know everyone is not as gaga over cars as we are, so we're trying to broaden our footprint a little. You know, community service, if you will. And we've created, uh, we're catering to a crowd that doesn't like to travel anywhere. We're looking out for the little guy. Go away! We don't want no... And now, news for shot ins. Yes, news for shot ins. <laughs> shot ins. So here we are, peop folks that never like to leave the house, never like to come up out of their, what is it called? Panic room? <laughs> the basement? Yeah. Bunker? Bunker. Colin, we're looking at you. <laughs> Safety bunker. So anyway, we got a couple stories here. Non sequiturs, if you will. The first one is coming from Gizmag, Ben, and this is a conceptual floating hotel. It aims for energy autonomy. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Yes, really. <laughs> <laughs> so this artist guy, I think he's an Italian dude, he has come up with something the, called the Solar Floating Resort. It is a circular sort of houseboat, very futuristic looking, all kinds of solar panels on the outside of it that he claims would make it energy independent That's and self-sufficient, which, again, this is a concept, so n there are zero numbers associated with it or even <laughs> plans to manufacture it, but... His idea is shame. But look at cool all those idea. fake really solar cool. panels in the picture. It must be real. <laughs> 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 or something. And at first, you, at first you look at this and you go, how is this news for shut-ins? Because you have to go out <laughs> to, get in. to get in. But look, you're holding yourself out in the middle of a lake. Or along the coastline. As far from people as you can get. And you can go underwater, too. It there's goes a viewing, underwater. Un viewing cupola. Ah, upside perfect. down, reverse, inverted cupola. Whatever it is. So I never have to see other people again. Just fish. energy independent, out in the middle of the ocean. Yes, but can you access Facebook with it? Well, you wouldn't want Facebook if you didn't want it. People, exactly. right? The shut-ins, though. Would this uh, technically be your own nation? Then is this a uh, good Paul? <laughs> like brand, uh, Pretoria? Uh, like yeah, <laughs> Peterville was already taken by the game by the airport. To go, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, um, I think yes. If you're 12 yeah, miles yes. offshore, right? Can this go 12 miles? This can't do. 
It could. Let's be real. <laughs> <laughs> what? There's something in England. I guess during the Second World War, they had these um, concrete th- gun emplacements they put out in the channel, I guess. And one guy has claimed one of them as like his own country, and I forget what <laughs> it's called. No, I remember that, yeah. It's I ridiculous. think it's. Uh, see, the issue with this thing, though, is you couldn't take this out anywhere where waves, you know, was actually wavy. This thing would. Oh, can you imagine if there was a storm? You'd yeah, be this thing would sink instantly. Yeah, be a little left. So, but in 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 a little safer news, if you still want to get away from it all, little hotel, the French have come up with something called the Bubble Holt Hotel that gives you this 360 degree view of nature. Never mind that you you wouldn't actually want to be out in nature. This is enclosing you in plastic. Oh, thank God! I know, <laughs> safe, sterile, the American way. Away from is there heroes. ventilation? No, you don't need ventilation. So you, so you just die. I don't know. There's probably like a month's supply of oxygen, Colin. Why you got to think of all these details? You become a dad. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, the guys come up with this bubble shape, literally. Is that, is that a fire extinguisher I see? So uh-huh. in case your plastic bubble catches on fire? <laughs> this is very Logan. Logan's running. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> this is Biodome slash Bubble Boy slash... Not interested, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, the, the, I guess they're like 11 grand U.S. to, to make these. And there's a hotel in France that offers this service, so you can sleep under the stars without actually being under the stars. Wait, this is real? Uh, yeah. Ooh. Apparently. <laughs> and, and the guy that wrote the article has a turkey neck, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> I was literally in the middle of explaining something to Craig earlier today, and he had this article pulled up, and he glanced over and just went silent. His mouth just dropped. <laughs> what the hell's wrong with you? That guy. <laughs> he looks... He looks like something. <laughs> so. so beware. All right. So that's our next story. So moving along, you're not going to have to worry about going outside. Remember, the Garden of Eden was outside as well. We've got a, a, a <laughs> garden of your own. You can grow your own vegetables and herbs indoors thanks to the green wheel that's shaped like a halo. So this is where I could take Without my uh, I, I could go to the hotel in the middle of the ocean oh. and take my hi- my halo of vegetables. Vegetables. So I that, can at least eat. That's pretty cool. Yes. That's it's I don't think this works. <laughs> <laughs> is this real? I would think not. It looks too <laughs> looks like an Xbox. Redonkulous. <laughs> with food in it. It looks like the Dyson <laughs> fan. Yeah, yeah, it does it looks like that too, yeah. It has no blades that you can see. <laughs> and it was written by a guy, Ben Cuxworth. <laughs> I'm not kidding. They have the worst authors at Gizmag, Ben. Why? <laughs> Mr. Cuxworth. <laughs> and, oh, we have found, thanks to Mirko, the uh, British independent, whatever it is, is called the Principality of Sealand. <laughs> Rather oxymoronic name. Oh, yeah, it was an uh, abandoned oil. Uh, yes, something like that. Oil uh, platform. That's yes. a good name. Sea land. sea land. It's like some fake amusement park. It's terrible. <laughs> We're going to Sea Land. Or in Mario Brothers 3, they had like Sky Land, uh, Water Land. Anyway, moving along. Last article for our shut in enthusiast. Uh, because you don't want your kids to end up like you if and when you let them outside. Because uh, you're self loathed. Should this have been called. Gizmag for shut-ins, Ben. <laughs> yeah, I know, jeez. You guys got like a um, advertising, you know? We have a with we have a deal something? with them. We yeah. are cross-linking. <laughs> Thank you. We're doing a blog roll. Anyway, so this little gadget here attaches to the um, chain or the rope of a swing set, and I, I supposedly plays music as your kids are out there swinging away. There you go. So it encourages them to get some fresh air and exercise without the aid of a bubble. There you go. Brilliant. Who would have thought? Look at that toothless smile on the little boy there. Mm-hmm. You can't help but That's smile. genuine. Daddy hit him. That's why he doesn't have front tooth. <laughs> Boom. Shut up. No, he, Damn it. He fell down. <laughs> he fell down the stairs. It was yeah. a doorknob. They could just jump out in front of you. you know, Can you so program clumsy. this thing for uh, evil, though? This is a real question. What's that, Colin? Can you program this for evil? I'm sure you could go put it at the park and have Chucky it style screaming or something. Yeah. Anything's possible. Mm-hmm. Electrocute yeah. people. Yeah. I think yeah. we're gonna have to start playing the Colin as a downer sound. Give it bath salts. Let's hear it. Oh, give it bath salts. <laughs> <laughs> ben looks even more <laughs> chronically depressed now. Colin, thanks for that. 
<laughs> I was gonna, oh, is he there? Did he hang up? Oh, did I say to him? I'm sorry. So that is hey, news for shut-ins. That was news for shut-ins. Now we are moving on to our next segment. The Jefferson Ross Memorial Price is correct. Here it comes. Internet's the most exciting podcast game. A fantastic prizes. The fabulous 10-minute-ish prize is correct. Insert contestant name here. Come on down. That's both of you guys. Ben's jazzercising. So, as you know, this was the segment founded and fostered by our long-lost Jefferson and Ross. We promised we would never do this feature without him. Thus, we've created an artificial intelligence of Jeffrey based on more than 100 hours of recordings from this very program. We've mined the essence of his feelings, his vehicle preferences, and sense of humor. So, I am proud to present to you, for the first time ever, Rossbot 3000. Rise, Rossbot, rise! Hi, I'm Jeffrey Ross 3000, and I've scoured the Craigslist. I spent most of the day and yesterday finding three of the best cars on Craigslist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to skiggle. <laughs> mm. so. And now he has gone back into stasis. <laughs> into stasis? Is that a medical term? It's like, uh, it's like what Walt Disney's head is in. Oh. Well, okay, so as you guys know, in this game, we have vehicles selected from Craigslist or eBay Motors or whatever, and it is our contestants' jobs to get as close as they can to guessing the actual price that the person selling the vehicle is asking for it. Got it? Got it. So if, if Ben were selling his G8, how much what what do you think it's going for? Is Two it, Euros. What is it? <laughs> is it the V6 or the V8? He's got the GT. Twenty out nine. Just had new control arms put on it. Control <laughs> arms, really? Oh yes. Why? Second set. That's a that's a twenty five, twenty six thousand dollar car. Okay. Actual retail price, Ben is asking eighteen hundred. <laughs> <laughs> no. Now anyway. they're gonna think it's for sale. So Ben, you were doing things a little bit differently this week as the Memorial Jeffrey, Jefferson Ross. Yeah, um, we, we will go to Jeff for each round, and he'll tell us what he has chosen. The Jeff okay. bot. The Jeff bot, who is not a dead. No, he's, he's immortalized. Very, he's immortalized. Okay, Do so I click what, on these links? Oh, it says don't peek, Colin. <laughs> How about don't peek, like the instructions say? Uh, it's not like you've ever played this. So anyway, A, B, and C will provide you pictures <clears throat> When it's time to reveal the answer, you may click on the answer link if you like. The, none of the links in the first one, A, B, C, work, Ben. Well, that's where you're wrong, because I just... Okay, well, it. then you can do an- <laughs> segment number one. <laughs> what is our vehicle? If you if you click on it and then click again, it should... Uh... <clears throat> this is... Okay. So I click on A here? Yeah, click on A, and you see the little picture denied. there. So... Denied. Is that what you're getting, really? Yeah. Really oh my cool. god, really? Yeah. Oh. That's what I'm getting, dog. Put it in the market. Cut this out. Do, 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 do. Hang with us, in. chat room. Leave this in. No way. Gorski says Work 68 early. million drachmas. <laughs> good <laughs> answer. 68 million. Very good. How many times have you been to the home country? Three Many. times. Three times. Yes. That's a yeah, long been, time. Uh, well, I w- once when I was like really little, yeah. uh, then when I was 11, and then uh, two summers ago, Very right nice. when I graduated. So you can speak, you can converse. <laughs> nat- <laughs> nat- <laughs> oh, okay. I'll have two. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, you don't even have to over there because uh, yeah. everywhere you go, is p- people speak English. Yeah. yeah, It's so weird. English, I've been to Germany three times, most of, once for vacation and twice for work, and it's like, Everybody speaks English. It's like yeah, my aunt lives in uh, my aunt lives in Amsterdam, and uh, uh, she she was born here, uh, and she she works out there. She, she ne- I don't think she's picked up Dutch yet. Wow, so. she just gets by with English. Yeah, it's like the new international language. That's what it should be called. It just international English. Yeah, just internet. No, it's just international <laughs> language. <laughs> I think that's kind of been the case though. No, I think the international language is money. Oh, yes. <laughs> the, the lingua franca is English. Lingua franca? Yeah. <laughs> yes, we I, took that from them, too. All right, I actually think the lower links work. Okay. Um, but... Do you just want to manually paste them in, Ben? Yeah, I'm going just to... Just don't link them. They are twit fix, so I'm, I'll just put the first one in here. 
All right. Uh, Boom. He got it. And, uh, I'll actually put all three of them. Well, I'll get. Well, I'll wait for you to mark it. Hopefully, it won't be access denied. No, it's. Ugh. Hang on. Just hang on. It's worse. Res reserve your, your feelings. Can I borrow a feeling? <laughs> you may put a feeling and lay away. Hopefully, the rest will work when we do this. DC Auto Geek. Apparently, he's DC Auto Greek. Right. Been there so many times. I've actually been to uh, Suda after um, I walked. Uh, there's a the biggest gorge in Europe. It's uh, the Samaria Gorge, and it's 13 miles, I think. And yeah, it takes you. You get there at like eight in the morning, and then you you walk all the way down. You're not done till like three in the uh -huh. afternoon, and you're beat. Oh and, yeah. But, but the you you get the uh, the Suda uh, Bay there, and it's just oh, it's fantastic. Actually, that might be um just east of or west of that, but you take a boat. To uh, you know, from wherever the the place like ex ex gets out of, yeah, and then you you take a ferry to uh, Suda, and then you take a bus back home. At least that's what I did. So you can pass out on the bus. Yeah. <laughs> All right, those oh. links working for you guys? Yes, they are. All right. So market. Ben. Sorry about that. And pause. So for this edition of the Price is Correct, Bionic Jeff decided he wanted a theme. That theme is bad body kits. <laughs> All right, so. Here we go. Let's find out what pick number one is. First up, 1996 Pontiac Grand Am. <laughs> 1996 Pontiac Grand Am. Take a look at that there. It's got scoops. This is no. Yeah. Look at no that arrow kit on that. It's got no door handles. You don't need no door handles, foo. That's aerodynamics kit you stage two. You won't need door handles where we're going. <laughs> so 102,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's a, it's a spring chicken then. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this uh, a couple other highlights. Mm. This car is a three year in a row first place winner at Drop Fest, as we all know, <laughs> along oh, with numerous I other my first shows. Drop Fest. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think? How much mm. is this car worth? Actual retail price. You mean what he's pricing it at? What's the asking or? price? What's, What's the, the asking, asking price? price? So, Colin, we'll give you honors being the, the veteran. What do you think this vehicle is worth here? What is, 1996, what is the asking? Said? 1996. How many Pontiac miles? 102,000. It's a total custom. Is this, per is this a crazy person? How is it written? <laughs> <laughs> he uses fairly he uh, proper did he grammar. Dog, D A W G. It's not the Jesus tap dancing Christ Craigslist ad. <laughs> did he say the word stoked? I need to know this. <laughs> well, he does say, you probably are not going to be able to get a full loan for my car because the blue book is only about 2500 So clearly he's not asking 2500 So he, so he thinks, thinks this car he, is worth more than that. He thinks there's so, a lot of added value here. So he thinks his car is worth $3,800. Colin says 3800 Final answer? Yes. Very good. Manuel. I'm gonna go just a hair lower at 3,500. Ooh, he's gonna be that guy. I hate One you. dollar, Bob. <laughs> All right, Ben. Actual retail price. Now, what do you guess, Craig? Oh, I have to guess too. You have it's to guess Boror. too. Do it. Uh, One dollar. One dollar. I'm gonna be that guy. Close, and the winner <laughs> is. <laughs> Mud says four easy payments of <laughs> 29.95. <laughs> All right, so we had run them down again. You Manny won. went with 3,500. U.S. dollars. Mm -hmm. Colin was 3,800 United States dollars. I guessed one dollar. All right. So. Well, they're actually asking six thousand four hundred dollars <laughs> for it. Are you serious? Well, so I mean, you were the closest. Closest. C Colin was the closest. Six thousand. How much was it? Oh, six thousand. Sixty-four hundred. Wow. Jiminy Christmas. So Colin is the winner. Of Does he know that adding one. stuff to your car actually makes the value less, not more? Well, you were right in asking if he was insane. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you do that to your car, obviously, you, you know, financially, you're probably not doing too well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So good job, Colin. Colin the Stalin dictator bird. He's taking it. That's the way I like it. For his self. All right. What happened you to that Christian guy, right? He's still under my thumb, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
Christian with too many A's. Yeah. All right, what is our next vehicle, Ben? Or should I say Jefferson Ross Bot 3000? Up next, 2004 Infinity G35. This is a 2004 Infinity G35 Coupe, automatic, mm. two door, mm. 78,000 miles in North Brunswick. And Canada. What, what a nice looking body kit this has. It's a body kit. It really is. <laughs> I wouldn't call it ill fitting at all. It's quite well fitting. Actually, so I think I like it slightly. It's it's tasteful as horrible body kits go, you yeah. know. It the, is quite tasteful. I think I've seen this on Stance Nation. What is with the grill though? What's going on there? Walk us through that, Manny. Is that <laughs> something you would do? Describe this. Well, yeah. it, it, it looks like it's just got an open face smile. It's happy to see you. <laughs> it's like one of the cars yeah. from Cars. If yes. it had a tail, it would be wagging. But okay. it doesn't It doesn't line up. Do you that's notice little, this? That's a little issue. No. <laughs> fitment is, is an supposed, issue. Is this supposed to be like a, you know, like a... It's not an ornament? issue. That's a fitment character. <laughs> it's a character. Does he have one of those hood ornaments that you could detach on this thing? I think that'd be pretty awesome. I think that's what's there, the little I, tear mark. Oh, <laughs> so you're saying this is like a like a Custom. swan or something that yeah. protrudes. Perhaps I, it doesn't look impale worthy. The spirit to me. of ecstasy will. Yeah, sp- yeah, yeah. There, there we go. All right, Colin, you won the last round. We'll give you honors. What's your guesstimate on this one? This was a what again? Two thousand two. Two thousand four Infinity G thirty five coupe. He didn't know how to spell infinity, so he went ahead and spelt spelt it both ways. Infinity <laughs> with a Y and infinity he with an I in the title. He couldn't have searched for it, right? And nah. saw how to spell he it could have just looked at his car. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he could have done that or looked at the picture. Well, the body kit might have replaced the bag. <laughs> yeah, that is what happened. What, what is the miles? 78,000. Mm. Or as he puts it, 78XXX. Mm. So okay. if, you don't, if you don't act fast, this is going to soon be 79 Is it a porn star's car? <laughs> <laughs> could be. Pretty hot. All right. What is your guess, Colin? Yeah, 8,500. 8,500 U.S. dollars. Manny? 13,500. 13 and the 500. My guess, $1. No, I'm kidding. $2. <laughs> Actual retail price, Ben, is? Well, they're actually asking $14,000 for it. Oh, Jesus. Really close. So who wins that, Craig? Manny. Well, you're the closest. You're the closest. <laughs> Thanks, Jeff Bot. 3,000. 3,000. All right, you're the winner. One, one point yes. Yes. This is a one point, one point unfortunately. Out. Anyway, round three. Good hustle, team. We're all tied up. It's still anyone's game except mine. <laughs> so, pick number three. Third and final round. Up <laughs> next. 2004 Infinity G35. That was our previous round, silly bionic. I'm going to guess 14,000. <laughs> <laughs> he needs reprogramming, just like Craig had at that camp. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Ben, that's unusually vicious for you. <laughs> something I would say. Ben gets our drink <laughs> hole. All right, Jeff Bot, try it again. Up next, 2008 Saturn Sky Redline Automatic. Not interested. Next car. <laughs> <laughs> Sky Redline. With the Suckomatic. So, what is this awful car? First, first of all, go ahead and describe this let's, body. Let's, let's walk the Please, listener let's through. Indulge. It's got a serrated, is that the right word? <laughs> I think it could cut bread. Ribbed perhaps. for driving pleasure. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, it looks. It's got the Viper kind of. It does. Yeah, the new Viper. Yeah, I guess the old one. Yeah, G, the GTS version. Yeah. It's got an engine. It's equi- well equipped. <laughs> well, is it is it the uh, the mallet version with the LS7? Mm, no, not quite. Not quite. Well, many. that's a shame. It is. It's got some weird stuff going on on the back end, like the diffuser. It's got black wheels. Mm. Something funky with the grill and bumper. So. Actual retail price is? Uh, that's huh? not how it works, Craig. Oh. We, have to, we have to guess first. Well, Manny goes first, then he won the last mm-hmm. round. I'm going to say 19,600. 19, is that your final answer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> He's agreeing. It All is right. your final answer. 
Colin. What did Manny say? $19,600. Wow. Wow. I'm going to have to go above that. This is just hair and say $19,800. The bestest in the world. Why are you trying to, why you got to be like that? <laughs> I don't know. Whoops. I don't know. All right. I am going to guess. I'm going to play conservative here, guys. I'm going to guess. Huh. I'm going to go with 12. It has, it has to be in whole dollars. No 50 cents bullshit. <laughs> Market Ben. Sorry. Whoa. Get a little rowdy. $12,479, final answer. What is the actual retail price? Ben, 13000 I am the winner. Thank I, you. I think you want to address Jeff Bot. Jeff? Well, they're actually asking $24,995 for it. Really? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> for that? You know what that means, though. What does it mean? The bird has a broad wingspan because he's the winner. Well, yeah. Colin, you were the closest. Cl Colin, you were the closest again. Yay. But it's still anyone's game. Isn't that right, Craig? No. I, I believe that's what. Yes, we have a new feature. It's called mm. the lightning round because you know what this sound means. Oh, it means it's the lightning round. It means Thor or. First time Zeus. ever. Yeah, there you heard go. This. You, you, think, you think Zeus and Thor were just separated at birth, honestly? Maybe. What about Prometheus? <laughs> what about Prometheus? Conmetheus. Uh, he's a god too. I, th no, I think he was a titan or a no. man. Anyway. Here's the deal. What's going on, Here's ben? the deal, folks. Colonel. Colonel. We just. Colonel <laughs> so, what we just did was we, we looked at cars with really awful body kits. Now, I want you to price out body kits apart from their cars. So, I'm not asking you to, to guess the precise prices here, but I want you to put them in order from lowest to highest. Now, Colin, you're going to have to sit this one out since you're already the winner. This is the opportunity for Craig and Manny to take the cake. They have to guess this perfectly. This is outrageous. Okay? To... <laughs> it's bull roar. This is an affront. <laughs> so go ahead and pull up A, B, and C, gentlemen. Duraflex. That sounds not like a body kit. <laughs> That's something for her pleasure. So go ahead and describe the first one, Craig. A is a white. <coughs> 1997 to 2003 Ford F 150 pick em up truck. It's white, like I mentioned. They've customized now the side mirrors by painting them. Now it's just the kit white. that's for sale. This is showing it applied, but. Oh, it's, these are only the kits. Just the kit. Oh, okay. Price out the kit. Hold oh, on, we just lost kit. Colin. Bull roar! He retreated. He gave up. He said, Winner by default. <laughs> Craig. <laughs> I'm not going to win. Prometheus. I had to double check this because I. I wanted to make sure I wasn't misinforming anybody. Is a Titan, son of a Vieptus, and Cli oh man, Clamine, brother to Atlas, and connection lost. Epi mm. ep 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 Is it harder to read in English letters? Than yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, Epimetheus. If I saw that in Greek, I could totally get it. Are we back? Yeah. Y yeah. Can you hear me? I don't know what happened there. I'm sorry. It's okay. You I'm sorry it? for everything. Well, you are the cause of all our woes. <laughs> Something about the internet that just went out. I don't know. Do you want to give us a video? Oh. Okay. <laughs> it would be nice. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? Are we still using the euro? No. <laughs> All right, and mark it, Ben, and <laughs> we'll pause for a moment, and yes, Craig, we are just looking at the body kits on these, so describe this first body kit. All right, the first one is on a Ford F-150. It is painted white. It looks mostly like a lower bumper. It extends the fascia down very low. It's got a sort of uh, elliptical, pointed elliptical lower air opening, a couple of fog lights as well. Match nicely with the updated headlamps. Aftermarket, of course. And the debadging. 
Oh yes, they they apparently just peeled the Ford logo <laughs> off. Yeah, well, didn't bother to put anything there in its place. Debadging makes a car faster. <laughs> you know what? What car company has a, an oval shaped logo that builds a lot of trucks? Mm. Uh, can't place it. Can't place can't it. Can't place it. Fisker. Anyway. All right. So, so then our second one, our second kit is here. a Hyundai Tiburon. Hyundai. This is, car is painted gold, and this has got a lot going on down low. The side <laughs> openings. Almost like gills. I almost wow. thought that was a silica. <laughs> it's like a bug or something. It looks like a Mitsuoka car. Have you ever seen one yes! of those Japanese ones? That yeah, awful. it looks like the koi fish. Yeah. Yes. Hideous. So that's what's going on there. And the third one, I don't even know what it is. Can't quite. That's is this a, a Nissan 350Z? Yeah, that's, a three se- that's a 370. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, it's got uh, scissor doors and... Arguably the most tasteful body kit. The back end, however, kind of looks like a Lamborghini sort of it's going got on. got scissor doors, yo. It's got scissor doors. Cut your hand off if you're not careful. Yeah, careful. All right, so those are the choices. Those are the rundowns. we got to order these most expensive to least expensive, Strippers correct? Strippers love scissor doors. Do they? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> We're going to find out later That's tonight, why they right? exist, right? <laughs> yeah, sure, we can do that. <laughs> All right. So, do your parents own bazookies in Detroit? <laughs> no, but I know the people that do own bazookies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, so Manny, how would you rate these, price-wise, most expensive to least expensive? I, I'm just gonna go uh, three, talk two, right into that mic. Three, two, one with the with the with the Nissan and then the Hyundai C B A. Then y- yes, okay, C B A. All right, I'm gonna mix it up. I'm gonna go cab. I'm gonna go C A B. <laughs> gonna put the, I'm going to put the Nissan first, mm-hmm. then I'm going with the Ford 150, followed by the Hyundai. You guys are doing this lowest to highest? Lowest to highest you wanted? Mm-hmm. Lowest to highest. Oh. I then re- I said highest to lowest, Ben. Oh, geez. Yeah. Then and you did, too. Yeah, well, then so just it. reverse that. Yeah. All right. Let so. A, B, C for Manuel. Mm. Mm. I'm going to go B, A, C, then. I'm back to first. Boom. Boom. It's decided. So, Ben, who is the actual retail price? <laughs> <laughs> so, Manoli, you said, name them off. A, B, I said, I said. Uh, Not by the letters, but by the. The Ford F-150. Okay. And then the Hyundai. And then the Nissan. Okay. Craig, and you said? Least expensive, I said Hyundai. Mm-hmm. Followed by the Ford F-150. And then, of course, Nissan. Well, well, for me, you're the closest. In fact, you're right on, which means you take the crown what? from Colin. What happened? What? Well, for me, the you're crown? the closest. This is the lightning round, Colin. Did you not hear my sound effect? But Craig had no points. I know. This Craig's is... the comeback kid. I told you it was anyone's game. I could see if we got, like, if he had, <laughs> you know, if he was close to me and he got that. He's demanding a recount, Ben. <laughs> the fact that I can't participate in the lightning round, that seems a little outrageous, don't you think? That's what makes it the crazy lightning round. You get the chance to electrocute the your, winner. your opponents. Sore loser, man. I'm a little upset by this. I could tell. Colin is fiercely competitive. I fiercely. won a Supreme Court hearing on the chads. <laughs> the dangly bits on the ballot. The dangly yeah. chads. Well, that concludes our Jefferson Ross Memorial Price is Correct. We do hope you all enjoyed it today. The bestest in the world. Is Craig. Thank you, Jeff. Very kind of you. (laughs) Sorry, guys. Sucks to be you. I know. Can can we see the birth certificate, Mirko says? (laughs) (laughs) Always out for a laugh. It's Mirko. Anyway, what have we got going on here? we got to thank you guys. Because we've got a show in the can, Ben, if you remember to record. (laughs) <laughs> oh, did you guys like did the you rehearsal? Him? Rehearsal, yes. I remind him plenty of times. I'm pretty sure. Anyway, <laughs> we got to plug your stuff here. Obi Wan Manoli, Katakis. You are our only hope. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's flavoring it up with with Greek. I'm 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 actually cousins with uh, Obi Wan uh, Kenobi, <laughs> Obi Wan Katakis. <laughs> <laughs> Do you also go as Old Ben Manoli? <laughs> Holy Manoli. <laughs> No. Is that how you were known on Tatooine? <laughs> <laughs> this is getting super cool. I'm finally Dorks. into the show just as it's ending. 
That's for the better. I no, think. I actually grew up. I grew up on Alderaan, so thanks for bringing up those oh, bad hard. memories. Millions of voices crying yeah. out. So Dorks. silenced. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Manoli, uh, you're with GMAuthority.com. That's yes. your your little bun in the air. Yeah, area. I'm a, I'm actually a Jedi. I'm a GM Jedi, and Ooh. you can find all my uh, GM Jedi master uh, work at uh, GMAuthority.com. Do you have a Twitter handle or Facebook? Uh, it is all my Twitter handle is at Motor City Greek, all one word. Facebook.com slash Motor City Greek. Very nice. And Instagram <laughs> slash Motor City Greek. I'm scowling in your general direction. Got a gram, dog. Craig, yeah. why aren't you gramming? Because I don't have an internet telephone or an Android. Oh, uh, oh, right. One of those Windows phones. <laughs> They're never going to get the gram. <laughs> That's fine by me. <laughs> I'd rather my pictures look nice. <laughs> Stalin Bird, America's original dictator. <laughs> Got the gulag set up and everything. <laughs> Dictator, I laugh. Shouldn't uh, it be penis tuber? <laughs> what? Anyway. <laughs> Collins, the bird, he sprung a leak again. <laughs> what are you working on, my friend? Yeah, I was just going to point out our um, on on kickingtires.com, um, our post that we did about, um, you know, the Consumer Reports uh, doesn't recommend the Prius C and... Uh, we recommend it, and we we basically, you know, for the price and for the gas mileage and for the space, you know, we like the we like the vehicle, so we we disagree with Consumer Reports. And I disagree with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a fine hybrid it, for what it is. If you want mileage, that's not a bad choice. It's yeah. funny because I I drove it after I had been in the Yaris for a few days, which I wasn't a fan of, and they're they are very similar. I mean, they are the same vehicle basically, right? So pretty much, uh, there's a lot of similarities on the inside. Um, but yeah, the Prius C for the price and for the level, um, you know, they've definitely made improvements on the Synergy Drive system compared to the Prius. It's a pretty good vehicle. If if all you cared about was the price and the fuel economy, you can't beat that. That car, mm-hmm. the, oh, pre- yeah. the value on that thing is just insane. Yeah. Absolutely, highest so fuel economy in the city, isn't it? Oh yeah, but it's it's in the fifties. But this is a car that starts under twenty grand. Yeah, good value. That's a strong. That's like a roundabout. We give you so much for so little. It's, it's they, like they the followed the roundabout. Just I like I like how you tied that in. That's a, you're a good you're a pro marketer PR guy. <laughs> spin. I have a PhD, a master's degree even in spin. <laughs> spin doctory. Yeah, spin. Have we I'm reminded a... you what a great deal it is to visit roundaboutshow.com <laughs> and click on the Amazon banner? It Not really, in at least fifteen all, minutes. Ben. All of the values that you would normally get at Amazon. All of the values. All of them. We're not talking like ninety eight percent. All value. Are belong to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Go ahead, Craig. Sorry. Remember, oh, I was going to thank you, but not anymore, Ben. Remember, you can watch oh, you're Roundabout. You're welcome. You're welcome, my young lad. I'll take it anyway. <laughs> Remember, you can watch Roundabout Live. <laughs> you can watch Roundabout Live if you're in the chat room right now. You're doing that right now. You can watch it live every Friday evening starting at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. 3.30 on the West Coast. You know there's that sort of like, uh, I think it's daylight saving time or something that happens. <laughs> I forget. It's something that happens with the clocks. Um, What's that thing again? I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, don't forget to check out the rest of the AutoLine family of fine programs, including AutoLine This Week, AutoLine After Hours, and, of course, AutoLine Daily. If you want to get involved with Roundabout, you certainly can. We're on Twitter. Just follow us. Get involved. Twitter.com slash Roundabout Show. We're also doing the Facebook thing. Facebook.com slash roundabout show. But Pretty not easy. Instagram. And we never no. will. Why aren't you guys gramming? <laughs> gramming out? Yeah, like Charlie Sheen banging those rocks. Gram rocks. 30 gram rocks. Gram rocks. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to remind everybody to send us in questions, yes. right, Craig? For next week's program, June very, 8th, Friday. Very special program. Hall versus Hall. But keep in mind that's VS, not V. They're not actually suing each other. This is. <laughs> Although by the end of this show. <laughs> could be a real old family feud, man. Oh, not golly! <laughs> the old prospector's here. Jim Hall, his twin, evil twin, Bob Hall, out in California, they are joining us next week for a Hall versus Hall roundabout, and we need your help. <laughs> Yes. That, that was the sound of two fists bumping together. We need questions. We need suggestions for things we can do on the program. And that's where you guys come in. They're gonna, a, the thing is, they're going to debate like 
huge topics. You know, the stuff we've had them do before. Uh, solstice versus sky. Mm. That, that's what, an example of what we've done before. Mm. Mm. Uh, best car to live in. We've done that before. Mm. Mm. What else can they debate? That's best you're this. Tell us. Worst that. Most fun them. You exactly. Know them. <laughs> so how can people get this to us, Craig? If you've got an electronic mail account. And some do. You can send a it's message, a send your suggestions to roundaboutshow at gmail.com. Get on the internet superhighway. <laughs> Information, Information superhighway. Smart. I'm sorry, it's That's a little redundant. <laughs> <laughs> roundaboutshow at gmail.com. We want to hear from you because we need your help for Jim Hall, Bob Hall, SmackDown, Throwdown, Showdown, next week, Friday, June 8th. At roundaboutshow at gmail.com. Roundaboutshow, what's the stadium, if you will, at the Mandalay Bay <laughs> in <laughs> Las Vegas? No. So we need your help. We do appreciate your support. Get your questions yep. in early. Get them in off. Requests. You know, if you have segment requests, mm -hmm. you know, I know one thing we're going to play is a car by any no other oh, name. Yes. That's quite a fun one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a good one. Oh, it's going to yeah. be a good one. You might want to just block <laughs> out the whole day. You know, take it off of work. Just it's worth. It's I like a, ta a tailgate party. Yeah, basically. Come on, it's the Hall Brothers. Let's How do it. the Hall are you? Get your Doritos. Have bleachers with, in with here. With extra live orange audience. powder. Live audience. <laughs> Great idea. So, yes, help us out. We'll help you out. Anyway, if you want to subscribe to uh, Roundabout, you can do it on iTunes. Also using a great little applet for smartphones called Stitcher. So get involved. Listen on the go. Listen anywhere you choose so to do. And anyway, thanks to all of you out there listening. We ask you to please join us again next week as we circle the Roundabout, and we'll talk to you then. The gods have spoken. Good show, oh. guys. Good hustle team. That was fun. Oh, Almighty Ra. Excuse me. My supplemental. My cows have separate stomachs. I have separate bladders. <laughs> right now. After you, after you. Yeah, something wrong with my internet, Ben. Anytime Skype does it, you know, I, I use uh, I have a desktop, but it's wireless. Wireless, wireless, wireless. Forgot about that. <laughs> Wireless, wireless. It's space age. <laughs> it's the internet of the future. <laughs> wireless. Internet without strings. I think it's this camera still, actually, to be honest. I think it's just too heavy of a stream to try so. to do. It kept uh, trying to refocus on you yeah, during the whole show. I, I like need to work on and... the settings on it. Microsoft, man. I, you know, give them an inch, they take a mile. Mm. I still love them, though. Yeah. 15 years strong. Can't give up now, you know. Windows <laughs> 8. Consumer preview. I'm thinking about actually partitioning my drive and maybe putting that on there to see how it looks. I'm sure my computer will never come back online. <laughs> well, in truth, Lion pretty much does that to you, too. So. <laughs> well, thank all y'all out there. Yes. <laughs> no chatting. Hello, people. We tired them out. Did you like uh, Bionic Jeff? I did. It was like Jeff was really here. Horse yeah. cocky. <laughs> it was funny. <laughs> <laughs> Craig you just laughed. Like, uh, Jeff the too, Manny, actually, when you first came on, I thought you were Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. Sound like him. He could be our official Jeff impersonator from yeah. from now on. I can try. I would need Jeff to get married first. <laughs> and have twins. <laughs> and have twins. <laughs> so beautiful. BRB. BRB. Let us know what type. <laughs> and I don't mean one or two. Doesn't know about the Bristol scale, oh. Ben. Yeah, I tried I tried to get my friends added to that. I couldn't. And they, they couldn't wanted get nothing on. to do with it, right? <laughs> huh? They wanted nothing to do with it, huh? No, they they wanted to, but they it, they couldn't get their accounts created or something when they tried hmm. to do it. That's what they said. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh, geez, it's not working for me. Oh boy, what they am I to do? They love the game. The boing, the boing. <laughs> so we're we gonna run down the chat room before they all ditch us, Craig. Before my voice collapses, we've oh. got AM to waking up in the morning. With roundabout show. With 
with Jasper. Is that who it is? I am the colonel. That's, right. That's your Jasper voice. Oh. Yes. So, AM2 in the Philippines. It's, it's 8.39 in the AM. We've got the auto bird. Plenty to squawk about. <laughs> We've got crayon breaking Luke. Mark Vill. Mark Villanova. I know. Mm. Named after the college, I'm sure. Or... Uh, University. Like a, a, a Greek town uh, and a celestial explosion. Villanova. <laughs> or something. <laughs> okay. <laughs> or the PBS show, Villanova. Anyway, I digress. We've got Mirko. We haven't had our German enthusiast join us for quite a spell. Two, type two, diabetes. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the club. <laughs> we've got Motor City Greek. Well, right here. Mud Monster, of course. We've got Roundabout 773 and Colonel Benjamin Slanders. Yeah, also. You've got to show him your mug you got. Just oh, I should. Eat. I'll go get it. At the garbage swap meet. Well, good show, guys. Thank you, chat room. Good stuff. Now I'm tired. Mirko, I want to play Lie of the Beholder. He's the making demands now. What's Lie of the Beholder? That is, what is Lie of the Beholder? I don't even remember. Ben, what's Lie of the Beholder? I can't keep track of these. I have early onset Alzheimer's. The other day as well. It's the Lie of the Beholder. It's the, the press release game where All right. the, the names have been removed. Good night, Mud Monster. Happy birthday, America. <laughs> Can you believe that was like a dollar? That celebrates America's bicentennial. I Here's to the tricentennial. You can't get anything for a dollar anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Not even lean, finely textured beef. What did you put in there, Colin? That's like Klingon <laughs> shit. My emoticons. Wow. Oh, there we go. Emo okay, I recognize those. I get those from people all the time. It's the Wingdings fonts, guys. The most useless font ever contrived. Wingdings. Wingdings, Wingdings predicted 9-11. <laughs> yep. Guys. I'm sure they did. Anyway, I good. Miss, I missed that conspiracy. <laughs> I think we're done here, Ben. I'm pretty sure we are. I think it's safe to pull the plug. <laughs> That's the... Wait, we got to name this thing. Oh, right, Crap. right, right. Chat room, stick around. Chat room, don't you be cutting and running. So we have. He's a dead. It's obviously got to be that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we, we we've got a few candidates. You got to give them. Oh, that's right. Fair shrift. It's a dead. So we've got Koala Deville. <laughs> she perp. She perp. A possum is a dead. I think it should be O. Hyphen possum <laughs> is a dead. O possum is a dead. O H possum. Yep. <laughs> exactly. I think it's got to be the dead one. Yeah. Chat room, what thinks you? Chat room. Chat room. Wesley. The answer with emoticons. <laughs> the, the episode is a dead. <laughs> uh, that's not bad. Mirko, he's always bored. <laughs> They're referring to me. I know. It's sad, Colin. Colin or Colin. Colon. Luke likes all of them. <laughs> surprise, surprise. <laughs> Apparently this is a John Lennon emoticon right here. Huh? It's John Lennon. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> From the Imagine cover. I, I get that. <laughs> this is Santa Claus. That one's good. Oh, no, it changed it. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm sorry. All right, well, I guess we're going with Opossum is a dead. Ding, ding, ding. It's a good choice. It's a fine choice. The silence. Did you guys block me off? Is that what happened? No, no, I'm sorry. I'm distracting myself. Had you won the contest, we would have been more inclined 